We're here with Amy Taylor Sheldon, uh, coach of the Lady Winford Royals. And Amy, as we just said, you've been here for a while. I think you said 28 years. Yep, 28. Um, and you've built a really successful uh, basketball program here uh, in, with the Winford Royals. Um, and I think it's always interesting is that we started doing these is to have our coaches kind of go back through and tell us a little bit about mm -hmm. your coaching background, kind of where you started and kind of how you got to this position at Winford. Um, I played in the 90s um, in the Pat Summit, you know, exciting yep. era. And so that's kind of how it started. I had a fantastic high school coach, Greg Boner, who uh, really instilled um, if you're going to do something right, you have to start acting like boys. And while I would never say that now, uh, in 2024, <laughs> that's what you had to do. Um, so we always did extra. We always went extra. We didn't show up in the gym in flip-flops or, you know, you dressed uh, like we didn't look like slovenly. You know, the standard was very strict, as a lot of coaches were then. And that was definitely the foundation for me. Like, if you want to win, you have to act like an, a winner. Uh, and then I played for Donna Newberry, who um, was a Hall of Fame softball coach, but um, was at Muskingum a long time and uh, won a national championship right before I had gotten to Muskingum. And um, so I was there and she was the same type of mentality, very much Andre Bell, trailblazer. Um, and there was no, like, she, I don't think she cracked a smile in four years. So um, <laughs> that was, again, very strict. You had to work very hard. You had to earn everything. Um, and then um, right after that, my, the spring of my senior year, I actually coached JV softball at John Glenn High School where I student taught. And there was a guy named there, 6'9", Randy Larrick, who played softball. And it was the first person I had ever played for that found joy in coaching. And um, I, that has never left me over 30 years that, you know, the relationships with the kids and um, just like having fun. It just, you know, so that was a real flip for me. Then of course I came here to Winford and Rob took me under his wing. And um, those were great years, eight years that just we had together in the gym. I came to two practices every day. He introduced me to everyone I needed to be introduced with. We went to clinics, we went to meetings, we sat and watched film when it was a double disc, you yep. know, <laughs> videotape. And um, so I just sat in here and learned and um, took notes and it was exhausting, but it was, those were really good years. And then after that, we had Coach Hershey and Coach Ayersman. And then by that time, I had figured some things out on my own. And, um, and that time too, I had had um, great coaching staff here with me now that's been here for 20 years. And uh, so it has been um, really good. You know, every, every coach, and you've mentioned a lot of names already. Mm -hmm. But, but every coach, I think, then kind of has their philosophy, how they would like their team to play or how people see their team. So maybe give us a little bit of insight of, like, how did you, like, what's your philosophy? Mm -hmm. and you've already mentioned a little bit of where it's mm -hmm. come from. Well, I think I've always been of a defensive mindset in terms of, like, the X's and O's. But I think for me and, and communicating with the kids, we try to talk about this every year that, you know, there's very few – things either an occupation or whatever other than sports that when you like walk in the door you're supposed to get better every day and there's somebody watching you with their finger on you to see if you're going to get better every day and the last thing that i want to be is a hypocrite <laughs> so um when we're challenging those kids like i am constantly challenging myself are we making the right adjustments are we running the right things one of the biggest things for me in terms of that growth mindset and you know, having some, like being very critical of myself and my kids and constructively is I've tried to do that with myself. And actually one of the best things um, for me has been in that growth mindset is letting someone like Chad Garbrick, who is a Crestline, you know, native, come in and has a much different perspective on basketball than I do because he's younger and because um, he's done a lot of those things. And uh, when his daughter uh, Meredith came, he became like part of our staff as a volunteer. And um, he just really, he really challenges me. And not a lot of people have done that in the last decade of my career. So we argue a lot, but um, I really appreciate that because he is the one, you know, what, the defense that's kind of set us apart um, this year is Chad's idea. That's his, you know, what he has thought, hey, with the group that we have, this is what we can run. So I don't know if a lot of people who coach like in their twilight always have um, that kind of like either uh, growth mindset or want to get better. You know, you know what, I know what's been good for us. I wanted to stick for that, but I have forced myself to change. So that's been really good. So the fact that 
um, in like a lot of philosophical things, but th to get better every day and to be willing to grow, I think is probably when I, why I've been able to sustain doing and, this. I mean, and I think that's, I, I mean, I guess, you know, I've been around some pretty good coaches too, and that's the thing that's, I've always seen with good coaches is I think every, throughout the season, you're always evaluating, and then at the end of the season, you evaluate more, and you're always like, if I'm gonna demand this out of my kids, right. this, is, this is what I have to do. Right. Um, What's your favorite part of coaching? Um, well, I think that, well, ultimately the favorite part of coaching has been relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, even with um, a few weeks ago when uh, Buzz Coker got his 500th yep. win, 35 players came back um, to be with Buzz. And of course, those are my players too. Yep. And um, just the relationships and like finding what you still have in common, even after they're gone. Um, just being part of the Winfrey community has been huge for me because I was a transplant. Just, uh, and I see that too, like at, at Colonel Crawford with David and yep. you in Ontario, you know, when you're enmeshed in that part of the community and the school board, you know, allows you to stay and build and grow and make mistakes. And um, then when you kind of get over that hurdle, um, you know, when you've really accomplished something, you've celebrated with a lot of people yep. and a lot of people are happy for you. And there's a lot of pressure, but it, there's a lot of um, joy too. So let's flip the coin and what, what's what's the least favorite thing of coaching? Um, my least part, least part right now is losing, of course, as <laughs> yeah. it always is. Yeah. And I think too, unfortunately for me, uh, again, doing a lot of things and being very critical, the wins don't almost yeah. don't ever feel as good as the losses, you know. So that part is sometimes, uh, we, we lost this past weekend and you know, going over and over and what could I have done differently and what changes or adjustments should I have made or what sets could I have called. Um, you know, that hindsight is difficult uh, after a loss when you're expected to win. But you're 10 and three, <laughs> you, you got a really, you got a really young basketball we do. team. And you're at that kind of that, you're at that halfway point of the season. You know, as we said, January kind of becomes that grind month. Yes, it is. That you're grinding through it, but but then you know, as you get to the end of this month, there's that excitement of there you is. know you could still be in the league hunt and you got the tournament. So right. kind of like as you look, and I know you don't like to look ahead, but yeah. but we do. Yeah, it's um, a journey. Kind of, kind of what do you what do you like foresee or what are you excited about with this team as you go into the second half of the year? Uh, we have had outstanding senior leadership from Kenna Caldwell and Zoe Whitmire, and they have been two kids who haven't won their whole careers. Last year was their first championship they had ever won with our sectional. And they have really bought into what their role is, how do they treat younger kids. We have eight freshmen. Um, and how, how hard they play, um, how supportive they are, how encouraging, that has been great. So the fact that I haven't had to worry about some of those things has been fantastic when you have one junior, two sophomores, and eight freshmen. So uh, the thing I have to remember is that it's, it is sometimes a roller coaster with freshmen, yep. and um, some things aren't always going to go according to plan. Uh, but it is, you know, the our league is very even. Um, yep. You know, there is a team that maybe you know, three-way tie for first or even a four-way tie for first in this particular league. Uh, but we do want to win a championship this year, and we'll keep plugging away and, you know, keeping our eyes on the prize uh, for that. But, um, you know, with, you know, it's statistically, you know, Caroline Sheldon and uh, Brooke Frommaugh and Maggie Ridge playing big uh, contributors. Our sophomore point guard, Meredith Engler, is, like, one of the best um, – point guards uh, around so it's just that finding that balance between enjoying the now yep. as much as you can but yet again that constant improvement and crit constructive criticism to get better get better get better and not you know pack it in or um, dwell too long on what's past well <laughs> it, you know, from an outsider and I've known you for a while right. because of our relationships with you know Rob and David mm -hmm. um, and I've always been impressed with with your teams and I'm really happy for this success that you're kind of experiencing again because you know you, you get that feeling of success and then you kind of go through that grind yep. a couple seasons but but a lot of times we learn a lot about our coaching when we're in that grind so Absolutely. On, on my behalf I wish you the best oh, of luck thank you the rest very of the much. way all right thanks <laughs> thank Amy you.